you're one of Tony Romo's closest friends, if not his best friend. Can you give us some insight into just how hard it was for Tony to go through this year and then to concede the job to Dak Prescott publicly? Yeah, I mean, I think back to what Tony did coming off 2015, how hard he worked to get in him position. I think he knew he had a good team around him going into training camp when he got hurt in, in Seattle in the third preseason game. You know, I, I, that was certainly a setback when you look at it. Um, but I, I was really proud of how he handled that. I mean, to have that press conference and to say the things he did and the way that he, he said it said a lot about who he was and where he was at. And, um, you know, and then you can't say enough about Dak and, and the relationship they had. I, I know this, being a leader in that locker room, it made it a lot easier for all of us, knowing, seeing how each of them both handled that situation. And, and uh, I think it started with the way Tony handled his press conference and then Dak every step of the way. I mean, he doesn't act like a rookie. I don't view Dak Prescott as a rookie. And that's, as, as Shannon knows, as a veteran, that's a compliment to him and how he's approached the game. He's got a bright future ahead of him. But, uh, you know, Tony had a chance to get in there in, in the Philadelphia game. I, I don't know that any of us know what lies ahead, uh, you know, but he can play this game. He can Jerry, play it on high level. Jerry knows. <laughs> Jerry, <laughs> certainly knows. <laughs> Jerry certainly does. And, and, you know, those guys are intelligent. You know, Tony and, and, and Jerry and Coach Garrett, I mean, I'm sure they'll spend some time and evaluate it and see how it plays out. Did, but did but Tony, Tony did for a long time. I mean, he played he at a high, high level. Did Tony ask you for any advice before he made that concession speech? Did, did you talk it through with him? No, I, we didn't really talk a whole lot through it. I mean, I, I think, you know, the time was coming that I think everybody was knowing that he was eventually coming back here. And you know, I, I think he, he put a lot of thought and time into how do you go about that? Do you take questions? Do you don't take questions? Do you, do, how, do how does something like that transpire? And, uh, I thought it, it, was, it was beautiful in the way that he approached it, and, and it was very heartfelt. It was honest, uh, sincere, and, and uh, I think it was the right way to go about it. And it says a lot about him. And, and I know it probably helped Dak and all of us make that transition mm -hmm. moving forward so that it wasn't a distraction. And I think ultimately that's what he wanted. So do you feel like right here, right now, it's Dak Prescott's football team? Yeah, I mean, Dak was 13-3 and in the way he played at a high level. He's got a bright future ahead of him, you know I mean? how everything plays out moving forward. I mean, uh, Dak's certainly got a bright future with that. And what's Tony role within that? I, mean, I think, uh, you know, th they'll get together and, and work that out. I don't, I don't know that, that that's a, I think what Dak's shown through his first year that ultimately, you know, what our football team's trying to do moving forward. I think that's clear. You made the, you said that you don't view Dak as a rookie. What makes him unique? Well, I, I think he's, I, I would start off with saying I think he's a lot more accurate than people probably thought coming in when you look at a fourth-round pick. Certainly he's got ability to get outside of the pocket and, and can extend plays and can run. But uh, his ability, his accuracy, but to me it's not even with the ball in his hand. It's the intangibles that he brings day in and day out. He doesn't act like a rookie in that, how he handles meetings, how he handles the press, his workouts, uh, the way he converses with his teammates and, and engages. All those things he seems – you know, a little bit older than his years. And then his play, he's very poised when he's out there in the field. So I think a lot of that he's seen Tony do and, and the interaction that he's had yeah. with those guys and good people around him. And uh, I think that's the thing that stands out most with him. How much easier would it be for Dak to continue to grow next year if Tony weren't on the team? I don't think that has anything to do with it. I mean, I think Dak would say Tony was always helping him uh, on, within games and thinking about this and, and, uh, you know, I think what you saw in that press conference was it was really Tony's heart. And uh, he was always there to help in whatever role he could do and, and, and talk with him and, hey, maybe think about this. And so, I mean, Tony was in, that sh in those shoes at one point in time, too. And so I think there's a respect that goes in with that. And uh, I know those two handle this extremely difficult situation. They both can play the position at a high, high level. Do you think, Tony, as a starter, you know, once you become a starter, it's hard to go into a backup role. Do you think Tony could be comfortable in a backup role? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. On that, that team. Yeah, I don't know that, that uh, I could answer that. I mean, I, I think he, you know, I know he's one of the most competitive guys I know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know that that's ever been discussed and, and would even be talked about. But, you know, I, I, I'm sure, if, you know, if he's wanting to play, then his expectation is that. And so where that is and how that transpires, I mean, I, I think, as you said, Jerry and, and, and some of those other guys will get together. They're, in, they're intelligent. They're going to think it through, and they're going to do what's best for both of them. Brought to you by 84 Lumber. Are you 84 material?